Mike, how do you set the tone or what, what's the approach of trying to bounce back, going on the road, and, and trying not to press too much but make the corrections that are needed? Well, I mean, I think it's got to be the same every week. You know, whether you win or you lose, you have to um, – you have to clear it and prepare for the next opponent. And this is a, you know, obviously a huge challenge for us, one that we're excited to, to get ready for, you know, learn their personnel, understand what it's going to take to, to go on the road and, and win out there, which is difficult. You know, I mean, they've, they've only lost, you know, maybe eight times in three years in the last three years, including, you know, playoffs and everything else. So there the, a lot of success uh, in that stadium. We understand that. And, uh, you know, we'll have to do everything you know that we can do to prepare for that, uh, to, to go out there and give ourselves a chance. What challenges does the Seahawks defense present? I think they're they're good on all levels. I think that they're they're multiple in their scheme. I think that the um, you know the front they play a lot of guys up front. They play hard. You know, obviously, you know Wagner and Adams. You know, solid up the middle. The you know, leaders of their defense. Um, you know. The inside guys are, are big, they're stout, they, they play, they're hard to move. You know, Indy, Indy tried to, to move them a couple times and, you know, short yarded situations, it was difficult. But, uh, you know, they, they play hard, they're active on the, on the edge, um, you know, disruptive. You mentioned being active on the edge. Uh, one of the guys they use a lot there is Jamal Adams. When you see a safety, uh, you know, be able to have that impact, you know, what type of stress does that put on your offense? Well, he's all over the place. You know, Jamal's um, done that for a long time. Um, you know, it's a good instinctive player. You know, excellent in blitzer, you know, can cover, um, obviously tackles and finds a football. I think just the, the instincts that he plays with, you know, allows them to put him in a lot of different places. Not needing it last year, do you expect the silent count will be like riding a bike for most guys, or do you have to spend a little extra time with it this week? Well, we may fall off the bike a few times this week, but we're going to practice it, and we're going to have to. Um, we're we're going to have to. We're going to need it. You know, we're going to need it early. So um, it's something that we're going to have to prepare for and 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 be able to function and, and operate and, and not use that as an excuse. Is there any benefit, Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson? I mean, every week's different. I mean, I think, you know, Kyler obviously is, um, you know, is faster than, than Russell. I mean, Russell, um, you know, does a great job of avoiding the rush and sliding third and nine. You know, Indy was, was coming home with, with pressure and there was a, you know, crease there in the B gap the other day. And, you know, he took it. He was excellent. Uh, feel for for being able to pump fake and get guys off their feet, uh, but still keep his eyes downfield. He's excellent uh, on the boot game. You know they they ran a, a number of those that were successful last week as well. How much is Taylor's recovery <clears throat> part of what happened to him? How much do you have to calibrate for that and what he does going forward? Now? I mean, I think that that'll be you know something that you know this is a good opportunity to bounce back and, and face adversity and. Uh, you know, again, when when things don't go well, you know that that kind of figure out what kind of team we have. And I would say that they didn't go well last week. I'm confident that you know we'll prepare, and uh, Taylor will be part of that group that that's going to go out and and work and, and try to focus and understand his matchups, understand the scheme and and how we have to uh, have to play. And we all have to play better. We all have to coach better. ACL recovery usually goes, do do take some time when you, when you come back. Is that something he's going to be? battling for a while? Uh, his recovery, I don't know, that would be something that you would have to talk to Taylor about. I, you know, I, I only try to figure out who's cleared and who can go. And um, if they're cleared, you know, we practice them and then make a decision on whether we're going to play them. From the good that he's been here, does he have some benefit to being familiar with, uh, with things in Seattle? Well, I mean, everything changes year to year, but there's a base concept. And, you know, I'm sure Bradley, you know, remembers some things that they did out there. It's you know, it's difficult when you're out there in live action to try to, you know, understand things and, you know, hand signals change and, you know, calls change each year. So, you know, we're excited to be able to work with Bradley, um, you know, since he's joined us. So, you know, with you know, the way things that are going, you know, I'm sure he'll continue to play for us. He didn't have a lot of time here with you in camp. What did, what did he show quickly that he managed to stick around? He picked up the defense well. He picked it up quickly and, you know, performed well in practice and uh, in the opportunities in the game. So, um, 
that's really all we ask of anybody that's coming in here new is just to pick it up as fast as you can and, and take advantage of every opportunity you get. Talked about trying to get some more targets for, for AJ and, and Julio the other day. I wonder if you could talk about kind of the balance between trying to get guys more targets and forcing balls. Uh, yeah, I mean, every play is, you know, got some, some first read options, some second read options. And, you know, so you, you try to design plays for guys that you think will be in good position. Sometimes that always doesn't work. And I think that's up to the quarterback to progress through and not to force it, you know, not just to. To, to throw it into a team meeting just for the sake of saying we're going to try to get this guy the football or, um, you know, so I think that that's important now, you know, how the, how the quarterback distributes the ball. I mean, he's in charge of, of the football and he's got reads that, that take him to certain places on, on every play. What did you think of the separation? Follow up, John. <clears throat> just, be as loud, just be louder than Paul when you follow Possible. up. The, uh, the, the one on Julio, the one that wound up being an interception, is that an example of maybe trying to, to force it in uh, to a situation there, or, or was that you know or a reasonable expectation of a, of a catch there? I mean, I think that we always expect guys that when it hits them in their hands, I mean, I think that whether there's in traffic or not, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Ryan's trying to progress through and went to the second window. You know, I mean, there's a lot of plays we'd like to have back. So, you know, hopefully this week when, when we get presented with the same situation, you know, we'll be able to execute. What do you think of the separation and speed and how much better can you be in, in those departments? We, we can be better in every department. You know, I mean, if you're basing off you know, Sundays, what we did Sunday, I would say that we can be better in, in every category that you could mention, whether it's speed, pass rush, running a football, blocking, tackling. That's just what it's going to be. When you're in that situation where there's a lot of things that need correcting, how do you decide – sort of what to emphasize, and is it possible to overwhelm? I mean, I'm sure you're not standing in a meeting with 30 different points of emphasis. No, I mean, I think the emphasis is what, what we feel like is going to be important this week, being able to to get going here on Seattle. Um, their schemes, their personnel, um, our game plan, uh, handling the, the atmosphere, the weather, the environment, everything that goes into to, to traveling out there and playing. So. You know, certainly don't want to overwhelm anybody and you know we talked about you know trying to be precise and not be perfect you know you're never going to be perfect but you know precise is is pretty darn good and you know that's that's understanding what you're supposed to be doing moving moving with a great speed uh, understanding what the concepts are but you know not living in this world of being perfect that, that if this happens and that happens and it just you can't play the game like that it was made some losses um, in the past that you guys have bounced back from um, really well. And this seems to set up like a situation like, I mean, what goes on in that locker room after a loss maybe like that where they're, they're let down to season opener and, and you've got a big test here coming up? I mean, the process is, you know, I mean, obviously everybody's disappointed after you lose. I mean, we're, 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 we, we've moved on, you know, we ha you have to. And so the full, full emphasis is, is about Seattle and, um, changing our mindset to them, which I think we have. I know we have. Um, having watched tape and, and visited with the players already today and their meetings and, and what we're going to be able to go do on the practice field is about having a great practice, you know, start stringing plays together. If it's a, not a play you like, then we got to move on and, you know, keep going, um, make the corrections after practice, and then, you know, come back and start to add in some of the situational stuff with third down in, in the red zone and get ready to travel. A lot was made about your comments, your response when asked about Julio Jones' penalty. I, I know you've used that phrase before, but was that sending a message or was no, it just I don't, it guys, simply a response? I, I, I don't think I've ever said anything uh, in front of you guys or these cameras or this microphone uh, that I haven't said to the players. I mean, I, 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 I hope not. Like, that's never my intent. They, they've heard it, um, you know, from me well before I've come out here. So. Um, and that just happened to be that specific play. And it could be somebody else the next time. I mean, we're just trying to coach, you know, the actions and not the result. Um, you know, sometimes that doesn't get flagged, right? But the next time it will. Or, you know, maybe there's a, there's a holding or a block in the back that doesn't get called. Well, we're still going to coach it. And we're going to coach it whether it gets called or not. So we're trying to focus on the actions and, and maybe not the, not the results. Sign uh, you think of depth on your team or uh, 
the fact that the rookies haven't developed as well as you'd like, that you didn't get much participation from the, from the rookies? Early? I think that all depends. You know, I, I see both sides of it. You know, preparation throughout the week, the, the competition through the week, the emphasis on special teams, and um, there's a lot that goes into it. We, we would like to try to continue to get those guys going uh, as much as we can. I, I am uh, I'm in full agreement you know, with that, and that's something that you know, we'll have to continue to do and emphasize the reps that they do get on the show team you know, are critical uh, for the evaluation and for their development. What, uh, what kind of a problem does DK Metcalf present? Well, I mean, there's just a size and strength uh, and speed element. Um, that that he has, you know, and so you know, you've got you know a big a big man that runs fast, that's strong, and um, you know I think if you get off balance, he's got the ability to to knock you by and use his strength, and then also you know some of his run after the catch, um, you know. So there's a lot of lot of problems, you know, a lot of issues, and you know Lockett is obviously uh, so in tune with the quarterback. And their ability to hit plays down the field um, routinely, over and over. I mean, every game it seems like, you know, there's an amazing catch in the end zone or down the field or close to the sidelines. That's, you know, really, really impressive. What can what can Bud build on out of that? What what do you expect from him next? We we go through these expectations, and it's the same for every player. Prepare throughout the week. Get your body. Um, as ready to play as you possibly can and, uh, and go out, know what to do, play fast and aggressive, impact the game, try to you know, follow the keys, try to, try to execute the keys, uh, and, and try, to, try to help the team win. That would be the expectation for every player. But you mentioned uh, like in, I guess Randy Bullock and how much you're hoping he just does a job. You don't have to worry about kicking. Every, every time we go out there to kick, I hope they do their job, Jim, no matter who it is. Whether it's Brett Kern, whether it's Randy, or the 53 other kickers that we've had here in the three years that I've been here. You mentioned uh, Carson the other day. Just what impresses you the most uh, as a running back? Runs hard. You know, runs hard, runs violent, runs behind his pads, got a good stiff arm. You saw him break a third and one, you know, and stiff arm for another, you know, 15 extra yards. So uh, catches the ball uh, well. They, they work him in the screen game, they work him out of the backfield. He's in there on third down, so you know he's done a really good job for him, and you know that's. I mean, he's a challenge like like there is every week, and this week it's it's him. Considering what happened with Ficken, do you feel like you need somebody behind Randy now? Yeah, we're continuing to evaluate that, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's always something that we're talking about and discussing, having the ability to uh, carry somebody in the case of uh, an emergency, in case of. Uh, Obviously, we're we're still dealing with, with with COVID and testing and, and and those types of things. So we'll continue to look at that. Thank you. Go. And is he still? I mean, I didn't know he was hurt at the time, but is he? Tucker's not on our team right now, so I don't know. I wouldn't want to comment on on Tucker or players that aren't on our team. You know, I think that you know that wouldn't be for me to answer.